Oh, you still can't see me. Hello, YouTubers. I'm afraid you can't see me, and it's been a while since I've been online. Um, it's because I can't get to my laptop, and I'm my laptop's with my husband, and I'm still in care. So basically, I I'm just doing what I can when I can until I'm with him again. In the meantime, I'm. If you can see me, I guess you can't. Hang on. Let's set up. Alright. Having cerebral palsy, I'm, I look older than my peers because it ages you. And I've got arthritic hips, and I've got, um, I just basically am how I got facing an operation. But the thing is, I know the Lord is with me, so I don't fear anything he oh excuses I the reason I got this condition he, the oh there's a term it, well it's known as lazy eye but it's because the muscles behind my eye this eye aren't strong enough for this for the eye but anyway I'm I'm I apologize, I haven't been on for a while, and uh, like I said, my laptop's with my husband, and I haven't produced movies in a while because I've been ill, but doesn't mean I won't produce movies, but um, tonight I just want to talk, just have a little bit of a, uh, just to fill you in on my life a bit, what I've been going through and how the Lord has helped me through it. Well. <clears throat> like I said, I've just got been told not more than a few weeks ago that I've got cerebral palsy, cerebral palsy, and I've got to have an operation. And I was born here in 1963, and I lived here until 1966. I've been total in Britain 26 years of my life, longer than I lived in America. And, um... The problem is, I see, what I'm seeing is, um, and I don't understand, is why are everybody turning, what's the big deal? I'm, the Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, he died for us. And I tell you what, if I didn't have him in my life, I, uh, my life would just, I would just be not worth it. There's, to be fair, I don't really like being here on earth because this is Satan's world and the Lord is going to deal with Satan. I'll be glad when I'm off of it. But the thing is, the Lord, he's given his life. John 3.16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. What does... Do you not understand? He's he's looked after me. He's taken care of me. He looks after you. He's um give you an example. Two years ago, my husband, he's because what the council had done to us, they it was evil what they done, and it was the devil was in the courtroom when we got evicted. And the reason this picture is showing like it is, I haven't got the light on in my room and I'm just having to rest my back because I can't get up to turn the light on. And, um, but anyway, two years ago, my husband was, um, he had, I had been placed in care and they couldn't put me back on the street because obviously the hospital knew I had cerebral palsy and that, and they knew I couldn't go back on the street. So they kept me in hospital. But again, all my life, all my adult life, these doctors knew I had cerebral palsy and they never told me. Never mind. They always made me think it was something else. Mind you, they did say spastic paraparesis, but then they said it was conversion disorder. 
And I thought, how can it be a conversion disorder? Well, it, somebody I went through my notes because uh, I didn't know if you're born in Britain, they can they now have they now can go back on the birth records and everything. And what happened was. Uh, long story about how I had developed cerebral palsy, but basically it happened in the womb, or it had to do with I was in the womb. I was cooking too long. <laughs> I was cooking too long in the womb. That's the way to put it. Anyway, um, I was in. My husband was in. He was this homeless charity took him in, and. Because he got on the street and he got frostbite and trench foot, and, not, and that was bad enough. He almost lost his legs. But again, my prayers to the Lord, he got answered. He got his feet and everything, and now we're, he's praying with me. But anyway, on you know, some, it'd be well, this actually, um, this is a Fifth, I think. Yes. Two years ago today, my husband came out of hospital after having major heart surgery. And I mean major. He had four arteries that were all blocked. And I mean all blocked. And as I had cerebral palsy from birth, he had heart disease from the time he was born he was born with heart disease in 1953 anyway he was all the way well first he was in Norwich hospital and I went up to see him there and um only was able to see him four times before he had to go to Cambridge um that's when it got really hard because um I was here in Norwich, and he was in Cambridge, and I, it was just terrible. I couldn't be with him. He only weighed seven stone, and he's six foot one, I think. He's taller than me. I'm only four, four something, um, four ten, I think, four eleven. Anyway, he went to, he went to Papworth. And that was in June fifth, and because uh, he'd been in Norwich Hospital for two or three weeks, and he he almost he had ended up in intensive care a couple of times, and again I wasn't able to go up to see him. So anyway, he went to Papworth, and. His operation was scheduled for the day after he got there. And that was really hard for me, just the fact that he was at Papworth. And I knew, knowing what operation he was going to undergo. On top of that, my mom had had an aortic aneurysm, so I almost lost my mom. And um, anyway, morning of my husband's up, I just felt, I don't know, he was, we haven't been able to be, we haven't been able to live together because of the evil eviction that was done to us. Um, it was literally, it was the judge even, he stitched us up and he met it, it, this one person who was behind it. And it seems when we left the courtroom that this person who was behind getting the judge to evict us was, they had something on the judge, but that being said, as I was saying, I, my husband had to go to Cambridge and I was really upset. I got to give him a hug and a cuddle the night before he went and I just wanted to hold on to him and never let him go. So anyway, um, he 
following day after he got to Cambridge, um, June 5th was his op, exactly two months and two, two years and two months from today. And um, he had this, he, he was in, I don't know, he, they had operated on him. And about the time, because roughly about, because I'd been praying to, well, before I, I said my prayer, because I had been praying anyway to the Lord, but before I, I well, what happened was I just suddenly felt his spirit being away from me and um, it was a horrible feeling and I went I can't because of my, my pelvis being tilted and everything I can't get on my hands and knees to pray it's a bit awkward because it's a bit painful getting up but anyway I prayed and I prayed and I cried and I, I left it to the Lord I said well, your will be done not mine if you choose to take my husband, I'll have to accept it, but I'll still love you. But, you know, I'm, I'll take his place if need be. If, you know, because when a person, as when one person goes, another comes into the world. So what happens is one person dies, another is, re is born. So anyway, I just, I said I'd take his place. And, um... Uh, but anyway, I got the call from the surgery surgeon, and he said that my husband survived. And um, my husband later found out that he, they lost him for a little bit on the operating table. But my prayer saved him, and that's what I'm trying to get through to everyone. Prayers are still valid and relevant today as they were ages ago. Miracles are still happening. All you got to do is turn your heart over to the Lord. There's things that I wished I could do, things I would like to be able to do, and things I want to do, but my health dictates what happens because unfortunately when you have cerebral palsy all your organs are smaller than normal and I'm actually living on one kidney and it's badly damaged now I'm at uh, CKD stage three um, my doctor told me the next stage I think he said was um, transplant he told me but I will, probably wouldn't be eligible for a transplant and, um, no, he said, I'm not eligible for a transplant because you have to have another good kidney to, for it to hold on to, and I've only got the one. So, basically, I've already been told next time I get an infection in my bladder, I am facing renal failure. And I'm not afraid, I'm not frightened. And then I found out I've got chronic pancreatitis and fatty liver disease. And again, I'm not frightened. What do 